Hi, I'm Joachim for Statistics Globe and in this video I'll explain how to create a distinct color palette using the R programming language. In the video I'm going to show you several examples and in all of these examples I'm creating color palettes based on 10 colors and we can specify the number of colors that we want to create as you can see in line 2 of the code because in this line of code I'm simply storing the value 10 in a new data object which is called nColors. So if you run line two of the code, a new data object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called nColors. Now, if you want to use the basic installation of the R programming language, then we can apply the rainbow function, as you can see in line four of the code. And within the rainbow function, we simply need to specify the number of colors that we want to create. So in this case, I'm using the nColors object that we have created before, which is specifying the number of colors to be equal to 10. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data object, which is called palette one. So if you run line four of the code, a new data object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called palette one. And we can print the content of this new data object to the RStudio console by running line five of the code. And after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that we have created a new vector of hex color codes. Now we can draw these colors in a pie chart to visualize the colors as you can see in lines seven to 10 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right of RStudio that a new plot has been created, which is showing the colors of our data object palette one. So as you have seen, it is relatively simple to create a color palette using the basic installation of the R programming language. However, it is also possible to modify this color palette as I'm showing in the following part of the tutorial. And in the following lines of code, I want to specify that our color palette should not contain any grayscales. And to do that, we first need to create a vector of all colors provided by the basic installation of the R programming language. And we can do that as you can see in line 12 of the code. So if you run this line of code, a new data object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called palette two underline R. And we can print this data object to the RStudio console by running line 13 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have returned a huge list of different color names. And you can also see that this list of color names contains many grayscales. So let's assume that we want to create a color palette without grayscales. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 15 to 17 of the code, because in these lines of code, I'm removing all color names from our vector of colors that contain the character string Gray. So if you run lines 15 to 17 of the code, a new data object appears at the top right of our studio, which is called palette two, no gray. And we can print this palette to the R studio console as well by running line 18 of the code. And then you can see that another vector of colors is returned. However, this time all gray scales have been removed. Now you can also see that this list of colors is still very large. So let's assume that we want to extract only a certain number of colors from this vector. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 20 to 22. And in these lines of code, I'm first setting a seed for reproducibility. And then I'm using the sample function to sample 10 colors from our vector of colors. And I'm storing the output of this sampling in the data object palette two. So if you run line 21 of the code, another color palette is appearing at the top right of RStudio, which is called palette two. And we can print this palette to the RStudio console by running line 22 of the code. And then you can see that we have subsetted our list of colors so that now we have created a new color palette containing 10 different colors. We can visualize this palette of colors as in the previous example by using the pi function, as you can see in lines 24 to 27 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that we have created another color palette, which is consisting of different colors than the first color palette that we have created in the first example.
So in the first part of this video, I have used the GR devices package, which is already provided by the basic installation of the R programming language. However, the R programming language provides many add-on packages, which can be used to create color palettes that are even prettier than the color palettes that I have shown you in the first examples. And for that reason, I want to show you some alternative packages that you may use to create color palettes. And in the next example, I want to use the R Color Brewer package to create a color palette. And in order to use the R Color Brewer package, we first need to install and load the package, as you can see in lines 29 and 30 of the code. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it, as you can see in line 30. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the R Color Brewer package, such as the functions that will be used in the following part of the tutorial. So if we want to create a palette of all colors provided by the R Color Brewer package, we can run the code that you can see in lines 32 to 36 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, another vector object has been created, which is called palette three all. And we have already printed this vector object to the RStudio console, as you can see at the bottom. And as you can see, our data object palette 3all contains a relatively large number of hex color codes. So let's assume that we want to extract only 10 of these colors to create our final color palette. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 38 to 40 of the code. So again, I'm setting a seed for reproducibility and then I'm using the sample function and within the sample function, I'm specifying the name of our color palette that contains all colors of the R Color Brewer package. And I'm using the N colors data object that I have created at the very beginning of this tutorial, which is specifying the number of colors that we want to extract. So if you run lines 38 to 40 of the code, a new color palette containing 10 different hex color codes is printed to the RStudio console. And we can visualize these colors in a pie chart, as you can see in lines 42 to 45 of the code. So if you run these lines of code at the bottom right of RStudio, a new pie chart is created, which is showing the 10 colors that we have extracted from the R Color Brewer package. Another package that I want to show you is the random color package that I'm installing and loading in lines 47 and 48 of the code. I have installed this package as well, so I'm just going to load it with line 48 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the random color package, such as distinct color palette, as you can see in line 51 of the code. And in order to create a reproducible color palette, based on the random color package, we can use the code that you can see in lines 50 to 52. So if you run these lines of code, a new data object, which is called palette four, is created and printed to the bottom in the RStudio console. And as you can see, we have created another color palette containing 10 different hex color codes. We can draw these colors in a pie chart, as you can see in lines 54 to 57 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right of our studio that we have created another palette containing distinct color codes in the R programming language. Last but not least, I want to show you another package that can be used to create color palettes in the R programming language. And this package is called Varidis. And I'm installing and loading the package in lines 59 and 60 of the code. I have installed this package as well, so I'm just going to load it with line 60. And if you want to use the Varidis package to create a distinct color palette, we first need to apply the Varidis pull function, as you can see in line 62. And within the Varidis pull function, I'm specifying the option argument to be equal to D. And this specifies the color palette that I want to use as basement for my final color palette. And then I'm specifying again our number of colors that we want to extract from this color palette. So if you run lines 62 and 63 of the code, another palette is created and printed to the RStudio console, which is again containing 10 hex color codes. And we can draw these colors in a pie chart, as you can see in lines 65 to 68 of the code. So after running these lines of code, another color palette is created at the bottom right. So in this tutorial, I have explained in several examples how to create a distinct color palette 
using the R programming language. However, in case you want to learn more on the examples that I have shown in this video, you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye bye.